So welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Did I stutter p- p- podcast? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's... We'll cut that out part. We'll cut that part out. <laughs> I don't think they cut anything out. So they might bleep a few things, but they don't cut anything out. So I have with uh, me, Mike and Kathy Field, long-term friends and uh, old friends, which is great. It's great to have a few years behind us and memories and different things. Mike and Kathy have been part of our praise family of churches for whatever, long time. Then you moved, you abandoned us and went somewhere else for a while. And then, expanded. Oh, you expanded us. <laughs> But once you're in, you're never out. So just so you know, that's how it works. It's in the bylaws. Awesome. Pretty sure. Yeah. And you have a new ministry that's really cool. And I want to talk about that today because your okay. ministry is pretty much a definition of what you do anyway and what you have been doing. So um, <clears throat> since this is probably a bivocational uh, story, is this a Bivo Joe podcast that we're doing? So. Okay. Um, that means we celebrate the fact that people do different things outside the church walls that make okay. a difference in people's lives. So ministry awesome. doesn't look like behind the pulpit, okay. right? Wonderful. Right. Yes. yes. You're experienced with that, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, very much outside. How did the you box. discover that part of your life, Mike? I'm going to ask you oh, first. Oh my! Yeah. It wasn't just like one moment. It was. Um, it was like. Over, over, a, uh, really over a lifetime, you just start seeing those things that really come out that, that you know are uh, God-given. Um, I would say they're outside of myself, but in, in trying to explain it to somebody, it's really not a big deal. Um, it is just God-given. Right, and, and I'll explain a little bit because you are a, um, I shared in, in the service that you, you were, I watched you operate in a tragedy situation where you yeah. where you moved about the room and and loved people, talked to them. So your ministry is both in they're not it's in times of stress yeah. that you find yourself uh, involved in people's lives, uh, both the ministry people and people that are uh, normal people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, stress, stressful times what seem to define s- who we are. Yeah, yeah. and so, uh, but ministry people, people who have a, a, a calling about leading people in the church world, okay, let's talk about them. Yeah. They have stresses in their lives sometimes that don't, that do not get addressed. Right. What, uh, how do you see that? What, how do you see that? Uh, how do you address that? Uh, as an outsider? Or one who's experiencing one's that. Who's <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good because uh, who takes care of the caregivers? Yeah. Um, and that that is that is that is a difficult question. Um, uh, caregivers or pastors or ministry leaders uh, are constantly being told they should be doing something else, or they constantly are being told they know a call from God and they know this is what they're working f- toward. But there's always some sort of resistance behind it, and uh, it's just wearing. And I think there's people that come alongside and and are able to. Some people don't even see that; they don't even know that they're stressed, which must be again a gift from God. And some people who are stressed just need somebody to come alongside and just say, "Hey, we believe in you." So you shared with me a a, st- a stat oh. about uh, people who enter the ministry. As a, as a calling? Yeah. Um, 50% of seminary students are out of the ministry within five years. And it's, it's probably because seminary teaches some good things, but it doesn't necessarily teach all of the things needed for ministry. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, could you tell us why do you think that is the case? Um, it's, it's good to know. We had a friend that went to seminary. And he, uh, the way he says it, he learned how church was supposed to be, how it's, how it's in the textbooks. And then they went and planted a church in Berkeley, California. Um, and he said, that's where he learned where the church really should be. And it was different. Um, you learned how the church 
uh, the like the I don't know the theories and the theologies, but then when he went to Berkeley, he learned the methodologies, how you really come across in love, how you share love with people, um, and and he then went back to his home and was able to have a different perspective on how to give care to the people around him. So it, he said it was absolutely necessary. Seminary was one extreme, and then where they planted a church was. A, another completely different extreme. Life tends to do that to us. It teaches us. Uh, we go through tough spots and we realize mm-hmm. we're empty and we don't have anything to give. Yeah. And then we go to the other place where we get filled up with something. And then we. So there's this there's this continuous tension. You said it's yeah. resistance. Where, yeah. Where's that resistance come from? From like getting help or, I think there's a. Maybe I'll I'll talk about it and you you tell me if I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't elaborate. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Fair. <laughs> I think there's an expectation when you get a pastor role or a ministry leader role and an expectation that you have your crap together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. that's when that's not true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then, then it becomes, then it becomes a tension yeah. that you feel like you're living a lie uh-huh. and there's a, there's a stress there. You're right. I think there's an expectation that pastors are perfect. Well, I haven't found one. I, 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 no, I haven't either. I, but I just, I think that we all have that expectation. We think, oh, I remember the day I got my pastor's license. I thought, oh, good, I'm perfect now. <laughs> and I wasn't. And it was, it's like, okay, God, uh, 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 you got to help me with my next step. So. <laughs> you know how uh, the, real, the real life of being a pastor isn't like uh, perfect, is it, Kathy? No, and I think sometimes it's like, well, pastors only work one day a week, so what's the problem? Why would they have problems? Only one hour one day a week. Yeah, that too. (laughs) (laughs) And realizing that they or ministry, uh, all ministry leaders in the church, they're carrying a lot of um, what their congregation, what their church family is going through. A lot of them are 24-7 because... They care, they pray, they, you know, walk through, and then they're also trying to minister to their own families yep. and be there for their immediate families or other things coming in. So That's so true, and I think, I think um, we're relearning what church, the church world is. It's, mm-hmm. it's certainly not the Sunday morning hour, and I don't think that's a survivable model. Right. I mean, I mean... It's interesting where Jesus said to Peter, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Then we think that means a building or we think that means a program or we think that means some kind of denominational structure. When all of those things are just far from true on that, it's when Jesus said he wants to build his church, he's going to use and use Peter for an example. I'll build my church on this rock. And so here's here's the here's the. Uh, the conundrum of this is that, okay, we're co-laborers in this calling. Jesus wants the world to be one and know who he is, and he wants to use the church, the big C church, to get that across. And then, we've, then we all run off to our little seminaries, our little places, and get a piece of paper, and we think, this isn't going to cut it. <laughs> <laughs> and we start feeling super low about ourselves. We feel like we don't have it, and then, then we are. Some of us are in denominations sometimes, and and we get pressure from other leaders that are, quote unquote, over us, and they and the, it kind of feels like, well, we're just not measuring up. I just don't. I don't think this is survivable. So I think that's why seminary students thought they were going to do that, and then five years later they think that's not what I Uh-oh. was signed yeah. up for. I'm almost positive it's Dallas Willard that talks about the cycle of grace. And when we understand the acceptance of God that God gives us, then we can we are accepted whether we succeed or fail. And then our, our self-esteem comes from God's acceptance in us. So if it's in reverse, we think we have to win all the time to, to get our value. And then our value then is accepted by God because we win and it, it is 
backwards um, and we have it backwards and I, I love how how he says it's the cycle of grace it's God's grace that accepts us and then from there whether we win or lose we could do the right thing but we we may not win we may not succeed we may not have the biggest church or we may not have the biggest ministry but whether we win or lose we know that we're accepted by God and then we can move forward we can do we can continue in that thing that God has called us to you know, I've, I felt like the by vote situation is the best, healthiest one mm -hmm. where you do something else besides pastoring. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't in itself fix this problem mm -hmm. because even sometimes being bivocational and you think, I think we feel like we fall short. We start feeling guilty for doing outside work yeah. that's not the gospel work. Yeah. And so, uh, I, I mean, I remember talking to a, a leader of a, he was a, been in the same sawmill for 25 years. And then, awesome. and then he pastored the town. Mm -hmm. And then he always felt uh, a little bit like uh, he was letting the church down when actually he was pastoring, expanding his ministry way more. Yeah. Yeah. And then somebody said, you do that so you can do this. And so it really becomes a freeing thing. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't, take the pressure off. So when your ministry interacts with people from all walks of this ministry spectrum, some are full-time, some are half-time, some are bivocational, some are quad-vocational, whatever the case, mm -hmm. you you find that there's different stresses in every, every situation. Mm -hmm. So how do you, uh, Kathy, how do you keep track of where to go on those things? How do you know who to talk to next? Tough question. Yeah, I think... We've just found from experience, um, it's just God appointments. Okay. And he takes us around and we go and just the other day, we thought we were going in one direction and we went to this other restaurant instead. And there's some people there and they just begin to talk and just begin to open up and let go of some of that stress. And so a lot of times we find ourselves, it's just through making ourselves available and getting outside the walls of the church and um, just meeting people where they're at. And they just start talking and we just are that safe spot for them to do that. And then just pray God gives us the words to encourage them. So it, that's awesome. And so you're not completely without form. Right. There's a calling to it in a direction, but it's spirit led by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's good. Uh -huh. Now tell us about the, the ministry uh, connection that you standing. Uh, okay. Um, our ministry, the ministry we're connected with now is Standing Stone Ministry. Okay. You can find them at standingstoneministry.org. Okay. And uh, they are shepherds across the, the U.S. and around the world even. Shepherds like you guys. Shepherds, yes. yeah. They're not inside churches. uh huh they're shepherds to the shepherds, and we provide pastoral care to um, pastors, ministry leaders, their families. Um, we really, really, all it is is we give them space to talk about whatever they want. They can vent. They can talk about their hobby. They can talk about <laughs> whatever, and we just give them space. You don't take their papers away if they do something really bad? No. Nope. Oh, that is a beautiful part. <laughs> no. Nope. No, we don't, we don't have to report. We do report certain things like... Um, like your uh, yeah, yeah, uh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Uh, abuse or or whatever, but um, we don't have to report to somebody else and say, "Hey, you know, this is what we heard about so and so." So if it's in if it's serious, we will walk with them through the process, and we will encourage them to talk to their leadership. So that's really a safe, sa yeah. safe. Yeah. And the other thing that we love about this is a lot of places that we've noticed in our ministry before this that God called us to was smaller churches. Right. And a lot of a lot of times, minister ministry leaders they don't have the funds to maybe pay someone to go see them or you know pay for whatever and through counseling or counseling something. stuff like that. Through Standing Stone Ministry, what we do it's all free to them. So going to, going out to coffee together, going for a meal, um, doing coaching. Um, Mike can offer coaching and different things like that. And it's all just to bless them, all free to them. Okay, that's cool. And it's very uh, 
Okay, it's not in a system where you are you operate cross denominationally. Yes, very much. Yes, that's really cool. I like that because that's. I think there's probably some lonely folks in non-affiliated churches mm-hmm. yeah. that feel more alone than the average yeah. guys and girls. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, uh, cross or interdenominational or cross-denominational, uh, there was one time I was meeting with a friend, and he says, hey, uh, we were in a coffee shop, and, and he says, hey, do you know that guy? I said, nope. And he says, well, he's the pastor of this. Let me introduce you. And then as we're talking, he says, hey, do you know that guy? Nope. Well, he's the pastor of this church. Um, let me introduce you. And, uh, and, and there was probably about five different introductions that this guy did all in this little coffee shop. And now I have five new friends that I didn't know before. And, uh, and so, yeah, that's kind of how we work. And it's just um, really, like Kathy said earlier, it's just a, a availability. Yep. And we just, you know, it's like, hey, you know, can we get together next week? So That's so awesome because you don't have the load of packing a church or setting direction for a church or having board meetings with church boards or doing all that stuff. You are free to be and to move about the, the area. What would you consider your geographical area? Oh, um, Right now, I, we have friends all around the world. So if 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 we had a friend call tomorrow and say, "Hey, man, we could really use coffee," and we're halfway around the world, we would say, "Yeah, we'll figure out how to get there." Okay. <laughs> and uh, um, right now, we are um, our main area is the Northwest. Uh, okay. We love Washington, Oregon, uh, Idaho, and into Montana. That's where uh, that's. That's probably gotcha. an easy day travel, right. um, and that's uh, we're not opposed to driving anywhere in there. Right. But uh, we have uh, with Zoom, we can make immediate conversation. That's another thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. But we don't mind driving somewhere. Um, if we had a friend that just says, "Hey, man, we're really having a hard time," okay, um, Zoom probably wouldn't cover that one. Uh huh. No, and a lot of times we'll say, "Hey, we have friends in that area. If you need, if you need God with skin on right now." We have friends in that area. Okay. If you can, uh, we'll be your friends here in a little bit. We can be about two or three days away. If you can handle that, right. we'll be there in two or three days. So Good. Yeah, one of the things that they shared with us, because um, some pastors, ministry leaders, go to the website for Standing Stone, and they're looking for somebody. And so what they'll do is maybe it's someone in Indiana, but what they're needing is what we could provide and some training or experience we have and so that might be an initial zoom meeting and so let's say well we we have mike and kathy they're over in eastern washington but they let's set up a zoom and see if they can connect better Uh, so or there may be a a shepherd in uh, oregon where we love to go to and sure another one and they might be a better fit so that's really cool because you and you have. I see a lot of freedom in what you're doing. That there's a mm-hmm. lot of you're not locked into a system, but I see it's really important. Mm-hmm. So I think that's really a, really a wonderful thing. So how do you guys stay healthy? Oh, well, that's a good question. Um, we're obviously. Is there another roving person that has to find you? Yeah, uh, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, <laughs> understanding stone. We have. Um, under the Standing Stone umbrella, we have a regional director who we meet monthly, and oh, he good. asks us the hard questions. Oh, good. Uh, above him, we have a Western uh, director, and he keeps in contact with us. He actually leads our cohort every other week. So okay. that cohort is uh, about a dozen other folks that are in our same situation. So we're, we have that friendship. Gotcha. Um, but we also just have good friends. Uh, we have a couple advisors that we... Uh, accountability crew, uh, crew, and and um, we just have people that keep us aware. So they ask us because we're so aware of other people's well-being. They ask us our well-being questions. Good. I I do talk to the man in the mirror often. He doesn't listen so well. No. But uh, <laughs> it's nice to have those other friends that ask me the hard questions. You and, brought up Michael Jackson now, so. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be a good lead-in song too. Yes, so. it would. <laughs> But anyway, I was <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
nice. <laughs> uh, well, that's cool. I, I think that's awesome because the right person for this job is you guys. And I thank you. And I think that's um, just I, it's clear that I am not the right person for that job because I know my gifting and my lane that I got to stay in. Mm -hmm. And I know your lane. Is, I mean, that's. It's so rewarding to see that. So, yeah. and I'm glad you have a place to go for your stuff because not there's nobody that's uh, immune to right. difficult oh, yeah. times, right. yeah. especially when we're on kind of the front lines, uh, helping people, talking Absolutely. to people. Uh, you know, you have situations in churches that are so difficult, so heavy, and you pack them around, like Kathy said. You pack okay. them around. You don't mean to, but. Mm -hmm. You go to sleep as a pastor, and you wake up, you're the pastor. It's not mm -hmm. like you unhook at 5 o'clock. Ding, check yeah. out. Uh -huh. So that takes a certain uh, stress, and I think what you guys. So uh, it's, anything else you would like to add? Because I, I want our typical uh, ending to this is that you pray uh, over the people that are listening, because there might be somebody clicking on here that knows okay. a pastor that is in trouble or in or a pastor's wife that is having a struggle, yes. or a, a pastor's husband, whatever the case. You, there might be somebody out there in ministry that is really struggling, and yeah. and I w they would need to. Uh, obviously, they can make contact with you. They could go to standingstone.org, and they could standingstoneministry.org. Oh, standingstoneministry.org. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Standingstoneministry.org. So uh, they could do that, or they could get in touch with you, or we could put them yeah. in touch to this podcast. Yeah. yeah. So why don't you pray for that situation as we wrap this up? Okay. Um, Lord, we come to you right now, and uh, I'm reminded right now of the scripture that said, pray to the Lord of the harvest, uh, for the workers are few, but the, the harvest is plenty. And the workers, the workers of the harvest are tired. Uh, you are the provider, yeah. and you are the the... You just bring everything together, and you are the one who makes that call. It is a specific call to be a worker of the harvest, a minister, a, a call to the kingdom of God to, to work with other people. And I just, right now, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would meet wherever anybody is, wherever they're sitting, yes. that you would just quicken that call to them, that you would remind them that they are not alone. You yes. are with them. You are with all of us. Yeah. And Lord, I ask that you would uh, put them in touch with somebody, a trusted friend, a somebody that they can have coffee with, somebody that they can have a, a trusted conversation with. Um, and Lord, we do have friends at Standing Stone Ministry. Uh, I know that uh, they could find somebody there. Uh, I know that they can find some this, whoever is in need. Um, I'm also reminded of the 988, the suicide prevention uh, uh, line. I, there is help, uh, and we just need yes. we need to know that it's okay to reach out to people. And uh, and so, Lord, I just ask that you would reassure whoever is in need, whoever is here in this prayer, that uh, that they can reach out. And yes. and Lord, that you commissioned them, you called them, and there's nothing that can that we face that you and I, you God and I can't face together. And we can't. Your grace will cover us in whatever we need. We thank you and praise you in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you for being with us, Mike and Kathy Field. Yep. Yes. So, uh, seems like coffee. Uh, yeah, that's our. Looks that's like that's who our who we are. Yeah. That's the motivation. Looks like coffee.net. You can find us there. Looks like coffee.net. Standing and Stone Ministry. Dot org. org. Yeah, that's the ministry side. So cool. Speaking of bivocational, yes. yeah, we we got it all covered right You're now. You're quad vocational. <laughs> uh, sometimes it feels like that's that. all right. It's a good thing. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.